Hi, my name is Jimmy Tager and I'm an incident meteorologist with the National Weather Service in San Diego. I'm going to spend a couple minutes going over how to interpret IAP weather forecasts. Here's an example of a forecast from the North Fire in Central California in 2018. At the top here you can see you have the fire name and the forecast details. Then you have the weather discussion followed by the forecast for the next shift forecast for the following shift, and then at the end, an outlook for the next couple days. Taking a closer look at the top, you can see there's an area that has the forecast number that could help you depict one forecast from another. Then you have the time and the date the forecast below is valid for. So in this instance, the first forecast for today is valid for 0600 to 2000 on September 8th, and then the next forecast is valid for 1800 on the 8th to 0800 on September 9th. And then the time and date the forecast was issued is usually the evening before, and in this case it's 2000 on September 7th. Then underneath here you can see we have a brief overview of the forecast and the general weather pattern. Usually here you have the most important information that's highlighted for the next period or even over the next couple days. So in this instance, we have a headline of poor relative humidity recovery overnight and stronger winds on Saturday. So here's a glimpse of the forecast for today, tonight, and the outlook. So at the very top, you have the weather. This section is important because if something hazardous was forecast, such as thunderstorms, it would be mentioned here. Cloud cover is usually mentioned here also, which can give you a heads up on whether you can expect temperatures to quickly rise and relative humidity to quickly fall from sunny skies, or if mostly cloudy skies will inhibit a quick change in conditions. Next we have the high temperatures, which shows a range of the highest expected temperatures through the period. The higher the temperature is, the closer an object will get to ignition. Next up is the relative humidity. So here, this is the minimum humidity, which is a range of the lowest relative humidity expected through a period. The lower the relative humidity is, the easier a fire will burn. Relative humidity is usually lowest in the afternoon, but an increase in humidity is possible when sea breeze develops over an area, bringing in a more moist air mass. Below humidity, we have the winds. In this case, we have 20-foot winds and ridgetop winds. Winds at a fire are extremely important, not only because they help move a fire in a certain direction, but also they help supply oxygen to the fire and reduce fuel moisture by increasing evaporation. Strong winds pushing flames into a certain direction help to preheat nearby fuels and increase the rate of spread. Last up in the today section, we have the stability and inversion. This indicates if an inversion is expected, the time is expected to lift, and the height above the surface that the smoke could be dispersed. A fire may be slow moving and not very active when under an inversion, but when an inversion lifts, winds can increase, temperature can increase, and relative humidity can decrease, which could quickly change fire behavior. When a fire is above an inversion, it will typically be more active than a fire below an inversion due to the difference in temperature and relative humidity. So for the tonight period here, we have basically the same elements, weather, temperature, humidity, winds, and inversion, but it goes over the low temperatures, the highest relative humidity that's expected, and if an inversion is expected to form over the nighttime period. Lastly, we have an outlook which basically is a discussion of the forecast for the weather for the next day. Additional days may be discussed if hazardous weather is expected. For instance, here it's just talking about Monday on Sunday, but if thunderstorms were forecast on Monday or Tuesday, that might also be highlighted. In summary, uh, no weather forecast is really ever set in stone. Feel free to chat with the IMET and FBAN to get additional information that could be added and helpful to, for you to fulfill your mission. IMETs always value 
feedback on their forecast, even if it's not a good forecast for the day. Feel free to chat with them through your radio or later on at camp. IMETs really value observations from the field. They can help them improve their forecast for future periods. And if you ever have any weather questions when you return home from a fire, feel free to reach out to your local National Weather Service office. We're always here to help and happy to chat with you. Be safe out there.